I'm going to turn this into this. And I'm going to show you step-by-step -step directions on how you can do this on your own. Here are the materials and the tools that you're going to need to complete this project. Safety glasses are important. A concealed drill bit for the cabinet hinges along with the template. A tape measure. A good set of clamps. We're going to use these for several parts of the project. A drill. A pocket hole jig along with some pocket hole screws, one and one quarter inch. A hole saw that's going to be used for the LED lights that we mount underneath the cabinets. Wood glue, this is very important to keep everything nice and strong. 1x3, one 1x2, one a circular saw that's going to be used to rip down this piece of 1 half inch plywood. A jigsaw that's going to be used to cut out the dividers and the main structure of the cabinets. A nail gun that's going to be used for the face frame of the upper cabinets. And a sander, we're going to sand everything down really nice uh, before we paint and in between coats of paint. And then over here we have a table saw and a miter saw. Very important to have those for this project. So that brings us back over here to our template that we made earlier on and this will is what we're going to use for the dividers and then the end pieces it's also going to be the main structure of the cabinets so once we get this half inch plywood cut to size this is going to be the side profile of the upper cabinet and it's important when you're making this template to account for this half inch that's underneath it so if you have a headliner or height requirements, just keep that extra half inch in mind or whatever size plywood that you're using and you should be good on that. So now I'm going to go ahead and rip this down the middle to nine and a half inches, which is the width of this to this. And then I'm going to go ahead and trace this out and cut several of these dividers. So I'm going to go ahead and get started now. Okay, I have this set up to cut this down to the size I need it. I'm just going to use a spare board that I had. You can use anything as long as it's nice and straight and you're able to clamp onto it. I need the board that probably would be cut down to 9.5 inches for my divider pieces and my end caps. So in order to do that, I need to take into account my blade and the guard next to it. So I've measured this and it's an inch and a half and this is I need nine and a half, so I need to make a total of 11 inches. So I have this 11 inches all the way down through here. What I need to do over here is to make sure that my blade is at the correct depth because I'm going to be cutting on top of my easels because I have such a small piece of plywood. If you had a wider piece, a 4x8 sheet of plywood, you could just scoot this off to one side of your easel and uh, you wouldn't have to worry about cutting into this, but in my case, if I try to do that, they just kind of, just with all the weight over here with the clamps and this board, it just kind of flips off the easel. So I am going to cut into them, but I have it set pretty close to the depth, uh, so I should be good and not go too far into the easels. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting that now. So what I need to do now is trace out my cardboard piece um, to another half inch piece of plywood, just like so. And for an eight foot section like I'm doing, you're going to need five of these. So you're going to have to cut out a total of five, so that's what my 
little tracing looks like. It's a little faded down here, but I can see it. So then I'm just going to take my jigsaw, get my safety glasses, of course, and start cutting on it. Just like that, we have one of them. And I'm gonna sand this all down, all the edges, so it'll be nice and smooth and with no rugged edges whatsoever. So I gotta do this four more times. pocket holes into the dividers now. I've already marked where I want the pocket holes to go on each divider. I just did two inches and seven inches. I've already calibrated this to a half inch for both the drill bit and the height of the pocket hole. So now I'm just going to go ahead and stick them in and kind of line it up with my mark. Make a nice clean hole, and then go to the next mark, do the same thing, and then do that again on the next one. measure the total length that I have and then I need to divide that by the sections that I'm going to be having on my upper cabinets. So in my case it's going to be 23 and a quarter is what I need to have between my dividers. Mm. So I'm going to go ahead and start measuring that up now. Okay, now it's time to install my dividers with wood glue and one inch pocket screws. So I've already put some wood glue on there, smeared it on really well. Now I'm ready to place this on the marks I had previously made. On this one, the end piece is pretty easy because it's just on the end. Just make sure it's lined up on the front and the back and the sides. It's pretty good. Okay, that's the first one. Now I have four more to go and then I'll have all the dividers installed and I'll start adding my bracing between them. Okay, now I'm ready to drill the holes for my LED puck lights. I've already measured the center of each section and I'm going to use a two and quarter inch hole saw to cut the holes. And then I'll start running my wires and my false floor supports. I am going to use a false floor so that it covers all my wires so I have no 
wires showing in the actual cabinet when it's finished. So I cut these half inch pieces of scrap plywood that had laying around and I'm gonna arrange them in a way that when I put a quarter inch piece of plywood on top of it, you'll see no wires and you won't see the top of the LED puck lights. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down right now and use clamps to hold them down. This is what it looks like with the face frame attached. I'm going to go ahead and start burning the wire for the LED lights now and we'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I'm going to use these quick splice connectors to connect my wires to my LED puck light. Okay, now I'm ready to start working on my door fronts. I'm gonna do a shaker style, and I'm gonna use half inch overlay hinges, which means that it's gonna take up a half an inch on this one and a half inch base frame. That means it's gonna leave me with one inch on the top and about one inch on the bottom. And then for the width, you're just gonna measure between this side and this side, and then add the amount that you need based on, so you can get a one inch gap between the doors. So in this case, I'm going to have to go a quarter inch more on this side. So when I make this one over here, I'm also going to go a quarter inch, which equals to a half inch, which will leave me a half, uh, one inch in between those two. And I'm going to do that all the way down. Now the end pieces are a little bit different because I don't have anything that's going to be butted up on this side. So I have to make the door a little bit wider on this side. Uh, so I'm going to make it a half inch wider on this side to then have a whole inch left over on the side. So in this case, I'm gonna do the width of this plus a quarter inch plus a half an inch. And that will be the total I need for this door front. Now over here, for a standard, it's gonna be the width between this and this plus a quarter inch plus a quarter inch. So in total, the width plus a half an inch. So I'm going to do that. I've actually already cut my runners and stringers for the doors, the door fronts. So now what I need to do is cut a quarter inch groove in all of these so that it can sit, uh, so a quarter inch piece of plywood could sit in between them to make the shaker style. So I'm going to show you how to do that without a dado blade. This is going to be with a typical uh, blade that is in your table saw because the dado blades are kind of expensive. About 75 to 150 dollars so i'm gonna do it the cheap way i'm gonna show you how to do it uh, it's just a little bit harder but it's, not, it's still pretty easy you just have to do multiple passes on the same piece so i'm going to show you how to do that now okay the first thing i need to do to get that groove in here which is the dado cut is i need to put the piece of wood up here and get it centered on the blade as close as possible i'm just using a scrap piece of wood that i have laying around that's the same width as the door stringers and runners. So after I do that, it's nice and centered. Get your blade to the correct height. 
In my case, I want it to be 3 eighths of an inch high so that when I go to put all of my uh, pieces together and I put the quarter inch plywood in the middle, I know to just make everything the quarter inch plywood three quarters of an inch wider and three quarters of an inch taller. So that's three eighths plus three eighths equals the three fourths. So now I'm gonna go ahead and run my test piece down. I'm actually gonna write test on here so I know this is my test piece. Run it through here. Then I'm gonna run all the rest of my stringers and runners through the blade at the same way I'm gonna do this test piece. Then I'm gonna go ahead and bump my fence just a minute amount, microscopic amount. And I'm gonna go ahead and rerun my test piece through one way, flip it around, go the different direction, and then go ahead and test it to make sure it fits into my quarter inch piece of plywood. If it doesn't, then I just need to come back here and do another minute adjustment, run it back through both ways again until it fits through or fits onto that quarter inch piece of plywood. So I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that now. Okay, now that I have all those pieces cut, I'm gonna go ahead and move my fence over just on minute amounts. Just barely tap it over. That right there might have been too much. That right there is about good. Make sure it's lined up well. Yeah, and that's about right. And you probably saw the first cut I did. I did a double side on my test piece. Just this gives me extra opportunity to make the adjustments in case the first time I don't get it. So I just did a, a double cut on both sides. That's up to you if you want to do that. You can do multiple of these test pieces if you want to be extra cautious to try to get this. Because once you do that first cut through all those pieces, you're pretty much stuck with what you've got. So. I'm gonna go ahead and run this through twice and see how the fit is. Is pretty darn good see how it's not moving at all but it's not too hard to get on or off so I'm pretty happy with where this is at on this cut so I'm gonna go ahead and run the rest of my pieces through now okay now I have everything cut to size I have my one and a quarter inch plywood cut to the size I need to oversize to fit into the grooves so I'm gonna set that aside for a moment I'm gonna go ahead and put my pocket holes in these right here so they can go ahead and attach to these. So I'm just gonna mark the side that I'm gonna be putting in the pocket hole jig just so I know exactly which side I'm doing. So I'm gonna bring that over, put my marks on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and line this up, clamp it down. It's all lined up and now I'm gonna go ahead and put in my hinges. I'm gonna do that 
by getting the tape measure here and just measuring two inches from the inside or here and then two inches from this side. I have a little jig here that I'm going to use and I'm going to line that up with the line I just made. It's got three holes, one for the actual hinge and then two for the sprues. So I'm going to mark all three holes. Do the same thing on this side. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is change out my drill bit to this. I'll put a link in the description for this. And I'm just going to put this on the center hole. Perfect as possible. And let's go ahead and start drilling. And just like that, we have a shaker style door. We went ahead and painted the upper cabinet and now we're ready to attach the doors. I went ahead and marked one quarter inch from the edge in all four corners so that we're able to line up the door so we have that one inch gap in between the doors. So I'm going to attach the door with the screws provided with the hinges. I'm going to clamp the door onto the face frame while I screw from underneath the cabinet. So I'm going to show you that process right now. Okay, here's the final product with everything painted, all the hardware mounted. Here's what one of them looks like on the inside with the gas struts and the magnet lock on the inside. This is a pretty easy project. I encourage you to do this on your own. And please let me know if uh, anything I did I could do better on. I'm still just learning myself. I'm a DIYer, but I, I enjoy doing this. and. I enjoy not being a professional because I like showing these videos as a DIYer and not a professional because these professionals have these fancy machines and fancy tools that DIYers don't have. So I really like to show what I do with my basic tools and my DIY knowledge. So please comment below and like and subscribe and I really appreciate you watching.